Hey, hey, here we go with chapter 13, lesson number 8, the angle between two vectors, also known as the scalar product, part 2. Bum, bum, bum. So, in the last lesson, we were looking at the scalar product, and one of the formulas for that is a dot b equals magnitude of a times the magnitude of b times cos theta. If we rearrange that, we end up with cos theta equals a dot b over the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. And we can use this formula to work out the size of an angle between two vectors. A note on that, first of all, theta is the angle between the vectors when they are pointing away from the vertex. So again, the vectors have to be tail to tail. And the largest possible value of theta is going to be 180 degrees. So thinking about these diagrams, here I've got two vectors. They are tail to tail. They are pointing away from the vertex. There's an angle of 60 degrees between them. So theta is going to be 60 degrees. With this one here, again, I've got two vectors. However, one of them is pointing away from the vertex and one of them is pointing into the vertex. Dun, dun, dun. So with this one, what you need to think is with this vector down here, if you slide that to the left, you're keeping the same length and the same direction. And now that vector will be pointing away from the vertex. So both of them will be pointing away. And because you're sliding it over, you get that straight line. If this part here is 60 degrees, 180 taken away 60 gives you 120. So the angle between these vectors then and the value of theta will be 120 degrees. For this one here, once again, you have two vectors. Again, they need to be pointing away from the vertex. Both vectors that are pointing in to the vertex. Hello. So you need to rearrange them. If you think about this vector here, if you're sliding that down, so you've got the same length, a same direction, and you've got this vector here, slide over, same length, a same direction, and they are now both pointing away from the vertex. The angle is 60 degrees between them, so the size of theta is 60 degrees. Another wee note on that, if a theta is 90 degrees, do you remember from the last time what a dot b is equal to? Good, that's just equal to zero, uh, since the cos of 90 is zero. Or another way of saying that is if a dot b equals zero, then theta, the size of the angle, will be 90 degrees. Let's try some examples then. So example one, a equals i plus 2j plus 2k, and b equals 2i plus 3j plus 6k. Calculate the angle between the vectors a and b. What's the first thing that you think you would do then, Aaron? Yeah, good. Write these vectors in component form. So vector A is going to be, well, because it's 1i, you're going to have 1. Because it's 2j, you'll have 2. And because it's 2k, you'll have 2. For B, do the exact same thing. We've got 2i, 3j, and 6k. So in component form, we'd have 2, 3, and 6. To work out the size of the angle, we're wanting to use this formula here. So cos theta equals a dot b over magnitude of a, magnitude of b. Uh, but we'd have to work these out first of all. You could always go and sub them in and then work it out. But I prefer just to work them out first. So work out a dot b, work out the magnitude of a, and work out the magnitude of b. So a dot b, using the formula from the last lesson, you are going to have the x's multiplied together, the y's multiplied together and the z's multiplied together and then add your answers. So 1 times 2 plus 2 times 3 plus 2 times 6. That will then give you 20. Working out the magnitude of a to get the magnitude it's going to be the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 2 squared. Working that out you'd end up with the square root of 9 which is obviously 3. Do the same thing for b, work out the magnitude, so it's the square root of 2 squared plus 3 squared plus 6 squared, which will give you the square root of 49, and we know the square root of 49 is 7. So from there then, we've worked out a dot b, we've worked out the magnitude of a and the magnitude of b, so you can sub them into that formula. So cos theta equals, well, a dot b was 20. We're dividing it by these two multiplied together, so it's going to be 3 times 7. That will give us 20 over 21. That is not the size of the angle, though. That is the cos of the angle. How do you get back to theta, then? Well, work out cos to the minus 1. So inverse cos of 20 over 21. And if you're working it out, 
it is in degrees, so you'd get 17.8 to one decimal place. Here we go then, example two. Show that A and B are perpendicular if A equals two, three, negative six, and B equals a negative three, two, zero. What you need to remember from this is just what we had on the first page. If the size of the angle is 90 degrees, so in other words, if the vectors are perpendicular, then A dot B must be equal to zero. So let's find the value of A dot B. So here, a dot b is going to be 2 times negative 3 plus 3 times 2 plus negative 6 times 0. That will give us negative 6 add 6 add 0, which gives us 0. Woo! That is what we wanted. So you know then that a is going to be perpendicular to b. As it says here, in order to show A is perpendicular to B, you don't need to find the magnitude of A and the magnitude of B. Really, if A dot B is equal to zero, well, you're gonna have zero divided by something, so you know your final answer will be zero. So you just need to work out A dot B. Example three, the vectors A, which is two I, minus 5j plus k, and B, which is pi, minus two j, plus 4k are perpendicular. Find the value of p. How do we do this then? What are you thinking? Brilliant, write them down in component form. So a, take the coefficients of i, j, and k. So we'd have a two, negative five, and one. Do the exact same thing for b. So for b, the coefficients here, what would they be, Madiha? Brilliant, we'd have p, then negative two, and four, because it's p, i, so we have a p in front of i, so that will be our coefficient. From there, it says they are perpendicular, and when they are perpendicular, you know, just as Olivia said, then a dot b must be equal to zero. Therefore, work out a dot b using this formula here. So here, if we work that out, two times p, Add on negative five times negative two, add one times four must be equal to zero because they're perpendicular. So simplify that, you get two p plus 10 plus four equals zero. Therefore two p, if you subtract 14 from both sides, two p is negative 14 and divide both sides by two, p would equal negative seven. The vectors are perpendicular, find the value of p, that is what we have done. Example four, R is 441, S is 320, and T is 201. Calculate the size of the angle R, S, T. So to do this, I don't know about you, but I always prefer just doing a wee sketch. So if you sketch the vectors, then let's make sure that they are pointing away from the vertex. And where is the vertex going to be, Sammy? Good, it's gonna be at S. Okay, because you have the angle R, S, T, S will be the vertex. So sketching it and you will end up with something like this. So we've got the vertex at S and we have a vector here coming up to R and another vector coming along to T. I've called them A and B. So A is going to be the vector S R and B is going to be the vector S T. I also know these points. So to work this out then, you're wanting to work out the size of that angle. Well, you're wanting to use the scalar product, but you would need to know the components, first of all, of these vectors A and B. So to work out vector A, well, A is SR, which is going to be R minus S, which is going to be 441, take away 320, which will give us 121. Do the same thing for B. Well, vector B is going to be going from S to T, and that will be T minus S, which will then be 201, take away 320, which will give us negative 1, negative 2. One. From there then, that is what we were just doing. We had to be sketch and we worked out the vectors A and B and to work out the size of the angle between them, well, you would have to use that formula with cos theta equals A dot B over the magnitude of A, magnitude of B. But from that, as I've said, I prefer working out A dot B, work out the magnitude of A and work out the magnitude of B first of all. So A dot B, well, multiply the X's together, Multiply the y's together, multiply the z's together. So you're multiplying the components and then adding them. That'll give us one times negative one, add two times negative two, add one times one, which will then give us negative four. 
Working out the magnitude of a, so it's the square root of 1 squared plus 2 squared plus 1 squared, which will give us root 6. The magnitude of b, it'll be the square root of negative 1 squared, add negative 2 squared, add 1 squared, which will again give us root 6. From there, well, we know that cos theta equals a dot b over the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b, so it's going to be negative 4 over root 6 times root 6. And root 6 times root 6 is 6. Brilliant. So from there, you get negative 4 over 6. Because you've got a negative, though, because it's cos and you end up with a negative, what does that mean? Well, when cos is a negative not in that first quadrant between 0 and 90 degrees, cos is a negative between 90 and 180. So because there is a negative, it means theta, the size of the angle, is going to be between 90 degrees and 180 degrees. So ignoring the negative, first of all, just work out inverse cos of 4 sixths and you get 48.2 degrees. That is not theta, though. That's not the size of the angle that we want. We want to work out the size of theta, and remember, it's going to be between 90 and 180. So take 180 degrees and subtract the size of the acute angle. That'll give us 131.8. Therefore, angle RST will be 131.8. Don't be confused by the drawings in this uh, example because you're just doing a small sketch. You don't know what it looks like. You don't know the size of the angle when you're sketching that. You're just drawing two vectors. You're writing in the points. You're not drawing it accurately. So here, this does not represent the angle uh, to scale or anything like that. Okay, let's try another one. Example five, the diagram shows the cuboid O A B C D E F G. F is the point eight four six. P divides AE in the ratio 2 to 1, so you'd have two parts and one part. Uh, Q is the midpoint of CG, so going from C to G, Q is going to be the midpoint, and you have to state the coordinates of P and Q. So to state the coordinates of P, first of all, well, we know that P is two-thirds up, uh, two-thirds of the way up AE. So thinking about the coordinates of A, first of all, what would that be if you write down the coordinates? Uh, help us out. Matthew, what would you have? Brilliant, good, you'd have 8, 0, 0. You know to get to point F, you're going along 8, then you're going back 4 in the Y, and you're going up 6 in the Z. So we came along 8, so there's a length of 8 there, there's a length of 4 here, and a length of 6. So to go from the origin to A, well, you're coming back 8. So it's just 8, 0 in the Y, 0 in the Z, so it's just 8, 0, 0. The coordinates of E, what would they be, Matthew? Brilliant. You're going along 8. You're not going back in the Y, so you're going to have 8, 0. And then to get to point E, well, you're having to go up the same height as point F, so you'll have 6. Good. Point P, then. Point P is half... No, it's not. It's two-thirds of the way up AE. So, really, you're still coming along 8. You're still going back 0, but you're going up two-thirds of the way from A to E, and really that's a distance of 6, 2 thirds of 6 is 4, so you would have 4 here. The coordinates of Q, well Q is halfway up C, G. So you can say then, the coordinates of C, well you're going along 0, you're going back 4, and you're going up 0, so you've got 0, 4, 0. For G, well, in order to get to G, you're going along 0. You're having to go back 4. It's the same as this F. You're still going back 4, and that's the thickness of this cuboid. And then again, the height. We know the height is 6, so you're going to have 0, 4, 6. Because Q is halfway up CG, well, to get to that, well, again, you're coming along 0. We don't need to go along here. We're having to go back 4 in order to get to C. And then it's half the height, so you're going to have 3. So that will be the points. P and Q. After that, for part B, it says find the size of the angle QPA. So we're going from Q to P to A. So for this, start to think about it in terms of vectors. Going from Q to P to A, well, you've got these three points. Imagine the vectors then going from P to Q and from P to A. So again, just go off to the side, do a small sketch. We've got these points, Q, P, and A. And remember, our vectors have to be pointing away from the vertex. I'm just going to call the vector P, Q, vector A, and vector P, A, B. So we've got an A and a B. 
From that then, I would need to work out the components of this vector A and the components of this vector B. So A is going to be PQ, so I'm going to have Q minus P. Working that out then, I'd have 0, 4, 3, take away 8, 0, 4, which will give us negative 8, 4, negative 1. Do the same thing with B, so vector B is going from P to A, so that is PA, so in other words, A minus P. Work that out and I'd have 800 zero, zero, take away 804, which will give us 0, 0, negative 4. From there, this is just what we had in the last page. We had the vectors A and B, we just worked them out. We have our wee sketch here with the points and we're putting in the vectors and we've got a theta the size of the angle between them. To work out theta, we are going to have to use the formula cos theta equals A dot B over the magnitude of A, magnitude of B. And for that, we would need to then work out A dot B. We'd have to work out the magnitude of A and work out the magnitude of B before we can work out cos theta. So A dot B, well, I'll do that the same way, so you'd have negative 8 times 0 plus 4 times 0 plus negative 1 times negative 4, which will then give us 4. So that is going to be uh, a dot b. The magnitude of a would have the square root of negative 8 squared plus 4 squared plus negative 1 squared, which will give us a square root of 81, which is 9. And the magnitude of b, do the exact same thing, it's the square root of 0 squared plus 0 squared plus negative 4 squared, which becomes root 16, which is Four. From there, we've worked out a dot b. We know the magnitude of both a and b. So the formula cos theta equals a dot b over the magnitude of a times the magnitude of b. So you're going to end up with 4 over 9 times 4, which will just simplify to 1 ninth. If you think about this, because cos theta is 1 ninth, it's a positive, and cos is a positive in the first quadrant, which means then that the size of the angle theta is going to be between 0 and 90 degrees. Obviously, when you're showing that in the sketch, if you bring it into 3D, it does not really represent that very well. And again, you're just doing a rough sketch of what it may be like, so you don't know if this is acute or if it is obtuse. So don't be put off by these uh, sketches that you are doing. Work this out. The size of the angle will be between 0 and 90. So work out a cost of the minus 1 of 1 ninth, and you get 83.6 degrees, meaning then that the angle you want, QPA, is 83.6 degrees. And that is how you would do that one. Try some of these questions. It's the angle between two vectors. Try the maths in action, page 212, exercise 9. Any problems, let me know. Good luck. Bye.